issues and here in Adelaide they've taken up the fight against the forced closure of Aboriginal communities with the international campaign SOS Black Australia. Call to Action Adelaide has led our march today and their leaders in their own right so please welcome Jeanette and Tanya. <laughs> Firstly, I'd like to pay my respects to the Ghana people whose land we're all meeting on today. I'd like to also say thank you to the Jobs, Justice and Climate March for including the First Nations. Mankind's search for energy is leading us to a future of destruction if we continue down the path of nuclear energy. First Nations people all over the world are on the front lines because of this, fighting both big business and government agendas. Mining of uranium and the storage of nuclear waste that is produced is proven a danger to all living things, on, including our planet. So why are we pursuing something that we know will and could mean the end of life on this planet, knowing that we have other options? And while this battle goes on, our communities are fighting for their own survival, fighting for country, culture, language and our people. Governments still want to close these communities because of what's in the ground, where these communities are, as well as burying what was removed, sold overseas, and if they have their way, put it and return it back to where they got it. It's important to stand up for First Nations of this land to help us fight the forced closures of Aboriginal communities. This way we can build strong, self-sufficient communities around the nation that can and will stand strong on country. Remember, we are all Indigenous to this planet. I'm just got to bring up. Sorry, bear with me. What I want to read out to you now is an official statement that was given out by the SOS Black Australia National Mob. And this is for all, this is support for the uh, official worldwide statement for people's climate marches. We, the original sovereign countrymen and women of this land, call on the wider world for your urgent support as we continue to face the threat of forced community closures. Ever since Tony Abbott made his infamous lifestyles comment, demonstrating his complete disregard and lack of insight into our culture, it has given us heart to see people around the world standing up to prevent our right to live freely on our own country in accordance with the UN Declaration of Indigenous Right Peoples. We consider it timely that our fifth global call to action coincides with people's climate marches around the world and we acknowledge common purpose with all those who stand in defence of this fragile planet. Of all people, we have played the longest role in caring for every aspect of country through traditional land management, ensuring that grasses grow, animals thrive and the rivers run since the earliest dreaming. We wish to unite with all people who are defending our only planet, with nurturing and sharing being central tenets of our practices and law. While the Australian Government is happy to give large mining companies unimpeded access to our land and all that lies beneath it, they have not even been willing to ensure that we have access to clean water. Shame. We have never been offered a treaty or proper redress for the lands that were taken. And there is more than enough money and the required technology to make every community energy independent and sustainable. <laughs> Tragically, this government's political objective has always been about serving corporate interests at our expense, while trying to use the pretext of dysfunction that has been imposed upon us since colonisation. Um, our people find themselves locked out and prevented from accessing important places to continue their stewardess, stewardship of country. Far from being nothing but bush, our culture and the country itself exists for many millennia in a state of balance, with each aspect supporting the other. What others view as desolated wilderness, we see as a garden which needs ongoing care ensuring a plentiful supply of food and warding off serious bushfires and drought. If the attacks on this nurtured environment aren't halted, the cause of such unrestrained greed will be infinitely greater than anything that you could put a dollar on. 
contributing further to climate change and land degradation. So while it's easy for people to take their eyes off the ball in troubled times, we feel it's critical that everyone understand that Malcolm Turnbull's policy on closures is identical to Tony Abbott's. One year after Colin Barnett first made his announcement, this threat is still clear, present and unavoidable. If the current talks do not go ahead in good faith, the only difference is the toned down rhetoric and more underhanded strategy instead of open and honest negotiations with individual community organisations can be open and pressure inducements and given past history, deliberate deceptions, any closure under the guise of more seemingly innocent terms like reform will still add up to be the same harm to our people. How can we have faith in a government that has already deregistered 3,207 Aboriginal sacred sites? That makes our task of amplifying the issue even more important than ever with the knowledge of the threat of our way of life, culture and obligations as custodians. We start, what started in West Australia with the withdrawal of the Commonwealth funds can easily flow on into the communities of South Australia and the Northern Territory if it's not stopped now. That's why we needed to make clear to the world that to not look away and don't let your guard down. Yeah. It will be most dangerous possible move and it will require our utmost vigilance to protect our homelands, community and culture. These threats include continued destruction, desecration and devaluation of the world's oldest living culture. Such acts e fall easily within the terms of the 1948 UN Convention of Genocide that Australia is a signatory to and add to the growing list of human rights abuses that has been seen in Australia placed on the international right human rights watch list. It should come as no surprise that a country that encourages with the rest of the world to adopt, hang on, sorry. Um, it's been revealed recently that if First Peoples in this wealthy country were ranked separately under the United Nations Human Development Index on economics, we would come 100 out of 200 nations. In this dire third world situation, we cannot simply afford to accept our, being, our people being forced off to, to the fringes of larger towns where they face threats of dislocation, violence, poverty, homelessness, imprisonment and death by drugs and alcohol. These are precisely the kinds of things the Homeland Movement was created to save our people from and if the government claims to have any genuine concern for our well-being, their actions over many years prove otherwise. In this land, environmental destruction has gone hand in hand with the colonial project. If all parties are true and honest, they would face up to the fact that racism has been and continues to be central to the way we are treated as people. Through land theft, institutionalisation, oh my lord, I just lost it. Anyway, I just want to say, please everybody, support Aboriginal communities, support the Aboriginal nations, strong, na strong families stay on country, strong communities protect country. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Jeanette Miller, I'm Ghana Arabana Naranga woman. I'll be very quick. I just want to say, I've been doing this since I was in my teens and I'm still doing it. So it's about time we all came together to make my job a bit easier, hey? Because Aboriginal people, we're not going anywhere. We're staying right here.